about since we're starting late. Right, Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800, KXIC, Ron Saul's room. Jay, I'm sorry. What? You're just a little low in voice there. You you need to like say, go Cubs, go! No. Go Cubs, go! I've already given my tip of the cap. I've been as gracious as I possibly yeah, can. Yeah, but you're like twice. tired here. What's going on? I want to hear a little night. Cub excitement going on. It was on. a long night last night. Uh, if you're hearing this, it's Thursday morning, and everyone is celebrating the Chicago Cubs victory over the Cleveland Indians. Historic Game 7. Fitting that it went to 10 innings, and uh, extra innings with even a rain delay. I mean, it was wild, wild game, but the Cubs got it done. I know you've got roots at Chicagoland. You were cheering on the Cubs along with millions. Yeah, I'm a little, little low in the eyes right now. I'm a little tired. Yeah, but we'll gain our, we'll get our, you know, let's get our second wind right now. It's time to talk to pets. <laughs> we'll have some fun with that. <laughs> yeah, no puppies to cheer us up here in the studio, but that's okay. They'd be singing it. They would be probably. We have uh, lots to talk about. Today. We're going to talk about the Scotty. We have our amazing pet story of the week. And what else are we going to talk about? Calming your pets. I don't know how I picked that. Now we're going to get all sleepy. Yeah, we're going to get sleepy again. <laughs> so uh, different ways you can calm your pet, uh, not only with, you know, there's some supplements and stuff out there, but we're going to just talk about general ways. How, how do I, gosh, this dog is just overwhelming here and there. And so we'll talk about how to uh, get that dog back into calming nature. So whether you're trying to train your dog or you have guests over or whatever that is, we're going to talk about how to keep your dog in control uh, through calming aids. Great. And then do you also have a food to feature today? American Naturals Premium Dog Food, which is not a well-known dog food in the area here, but we're going to talk about that. We're going to just, you can answer the question, is this the right food for your dog? And you come in with a pet land and check it out. Hmm. I've never heard of that before. America's Natural Premium. American Naturals Premium. All right. It's a, it's, it's a couple, A and P. They like to call it A and P. That's a little easier to remember. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I think today you need an exciting story because <laughs> <laughs> you're so. Am I dragging? Is yeah, we need starting a show now at this point in the morning. It's like I've already done my whole show. It's gonna like I get to the point where it's like oh, I need to take a little bit of a break, but not yet. We got to finish strong here, right? Yes. That's that's what we need to do. So we need Big Boy Sky here. So Big Boy Sky, where are you at? Um, <laughs> oh, he's dragging too. He is. Where yeah, are you? You look pretty hung over there, buddy. What's been going on? Have you been partying? He's got his Cubs hat on, his Harry Carey glasses on as Big well. Big W on his chest Big there. Wow. W. He shaved a W into his chest. Oh, oh he painted it blue. Yuck. Oh, my goodness. That's, he goes over the top. That is not a good look. All right, Big Boy Sky. All right, the amazing pet story of the week. Like, he can still pull it off. That was pretty impressive because yeah. he was looking kind of down. He just puts it on the air like that. Yes, he puts it on when he needs to. He shows up at game time, right? The family dog, Khan, save a month old shark playing in the family garden. Khan was keeping an eye on Charlotte while she was playing, and Khan was uh, acting aggressively towards Charlotte and the uh, Parents are starting to get a little concerned about what's going on, but uh, after he grabbed the girl and pushed her off to the side, he was bitten by a king brown snake, a venomous snake. Khan collapsed after being bitten. He saved the girl's life. He received an injection of anti-venom and mm. recovered from the bite. And so he was uh, the man, the dog that saved the day there. And they say that because this snake wasn't allowed to inject a large amount of venom, he, was able, he got away quick. So that they say that that type of snake, if it gets a lot of venom in your ear, you're in some big trouble. So uh, Khan saved Charlotte, and that was a few years ago. So now Charlotte's older, and she can thank Khan, her dog, for being alive today. So that's your amazing pet story of the week. All right, so there you go. That's our amazing pet story of the week. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk more about the Scotty. We'll talk about how to relax your dog. And then... Pet food list. <laughs> AMP, American and Natural. Done with AMP. We'll be right back with more after this. Uh, you can do a promo too if you want. Sure. All right, ready? Sure. And ready? 
Eight hundred KXIC morning with Jake Avery with Ron Salter from Petland of Iowa City. What are we going to talk about this week, Ron? Go Cubs, go! <laughs> I'm still singing it. Still party. We're going to talk about the Scottish Terrier, the Scotty. Is that the right breed for you? Then we're going to talk about calming your dog, relaxing your dogs and cats. How can we get that to happen in our house? And then American Natural Premium. Ooh, that's a different type of food. Is that the right food for your dog or cat? All right, that's a positive pet land show. Sunday morning at 9. Okay, I see. All right, good job. Ready? Yes. Part two. Here we go. Three, two. Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC, broadcasting from the furnace of the KXIC studio. <laughs> it's warm, isn't it? it it's, we're all heated up for the Cubs. <laughs> That's what's going on. We're yeah. a bunch of hot bodies because we're so excited. You may hear some voices outdoors, but uh, we'll try and keep things to a minimum here. We have lots to talk about, so let's get into it. The Scotty from Scotland. It's over. I know it. Ring the bell, right? Wait, what? They're from Scotland. Scotties. Oh, ring the bell. Right? All right. Let's be right. I go. Go. I'm going to try like, yeah, miss. I'm slow on the uptake there. Huh? I'll just blame it on the gloves <laughs> <laughs> in a great way. All right. So the Scottish Terrier is one of several ancient terriers. Ooh, when's he going to get this one? Uh, ancient uh, <laughs> terriers that in that evolved in the Western Skylands. Yeah. He got it. I'm going to say, that's not right. I don't even know what to say because it's named the Scotty. So. <laughs> Kleine, the elder, who came to Scotland with the Romans in the first century BC, that's some distance back mm -hmm. there, was the first to refer to the breed writing. Mm -hmm. uh, packs of small terriers were kept in Scotland for hunting and to control vermin. Which is such a common thing. We we yeah. get harassed by vermin quite a bit. We still are today. Isn't that kind of interesting? Yeah, well, and even when you think about it back then, years ago, we didn't have the buildings that we have today to keep them up. So, I mean, it's... it's yeah, um, it was probably a bigger they, issue. They were just easy. I think of, think of something as easy as the foundation of your house. I mean, without that, uh, you know, yeah, but they still can get in. I got a little mouse like in the walls within my house, and yeah. about once a week, I could hear him <laughs> scrape my nose. That's modern technology that you're home. So I mean, back then they can dig under that dirt mm. floor pretty easy, and it's just interesting. I mean, yeah. you should talk. Should do a little more well, research on Yeah, it's good to get them out of there. So dogs were uh, usually a, a useful tool. A uh, fearless and small enough to go to ground. They had. Uh, to possess the hardiness necessary to hunt in a rigorous climate and terrain. Oh, wonder if they cu cut them like uh, the Scotties are today back then. Because if they were in that rigorous climate, they need the fur to protect them and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, their attributes of hunting terriers are what we look for to this day. A uh, little known fact. Okay, here's a here's a, a tougher one. Which president had a Scotty? Mm -hmm. I bet you uh, half your audience right now is yelling up the answer. Uh, I don't know who. It was George W. Bush, oh, named okay. Barney. There you go. Was an internet sensation because there was a Barney cam. I don't remember that. There's a no, Barney cam either. there. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a uh, in our history here in the U.S. Uh, for the Scotty Terrier. Um, his body hung low between his legs. <laughs> <laughs> Long head, powerful teeth and jaws. They're referring to the head and jaws. <laughs> uh, and a thick double coat make him well suited to the demands of the harsh Scottish climate. Uh, this double coat uh, compromises a hard, wiry top coat to protect against the elements and a soft, dense undercoat to provide insulation. Playful or serious, a Scotty's moods are easily predicted by his upright tail and ears. I think they're kind of perky and fun. Yeah. Uh, his sensitive, he is sensitive to praise and blame and adapts to your moods. Mm, I like that. Quiet when the household is quiet, but always ready for activity. 
properly trained, he is a gentleman on the street. And that's what I think of a Scotty, is, mm -hmm. you know, that gentleman aspect of things. Uh, tolerant of admiring strangers, <laughs> but indifferent to that, bland, to their blandishments <laughs> and heedless to yappy street dogs, unless attacked. <laughs> wow, that was a mouthful that came out there. I like the first <laughs> part of it. Um, and then finally, set aside the time every two days to brush and comb your Scotty, so just wear and tear on it, uh, and remove all mats with trimming every month or two, your Scotty will keep that true Scotty look. So the Scotty tends to be in that, you know, independent dog uh, aspects, but is very much a family dog and is going to model, you know, what's going on in your family and all. Um, it does have that double coat uh, aspect to it, so it that is uh, most likely why it has the the cut of today because on the you know indoors you know the moderate 70 degrees that we keep our homes at um, it's going to get overheated with all that insulation and isn't it interesting that it is on the top of the dog and heat rises and so um, a lot of that heat then can dissipate because of the that traditional Scotty uh, uh, cut that that occurs and and if you're not if you're not following what I'm saying there. Scotties will have the top of their whole body all the way up through the neck cut very short, a lot like the schnauzer is. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of that then would dissipate the heat as a result. But it's a cute color, and it is what we then also uh, look to as the classic Scotty look. Uh, so a really wonderful dog. We've got one at Petland. Real plumpy. Every time I hear the counselors, pet counselors go to get that little puppy out for somebody, I, they laugh every single time. They go, oh my gosh, it's so plumpy. So it's a nice plumpy little Scotty that we have in the store right now. All right, good deal. Take a look. Go step by that lamp. Check it out. Absolutely. All right, well, how do you comb that Scotty down when it's all wild? So, you know what? We do a lot of analogies on the, the air here uh, during Positively Petland radio show. on. Uh, people versus the dogs themselves. And we can translate a lot of our experiences that we have with people, children, babies, and then translate that to our dogs and say, hey, you know, there is some similarities in some behaviors that we can take advantage of. On this calming side of things, one of the uh, most, you know, I get to talk with a lot of families every day, and we've talked about that whole ADD kind of thing. Um, and I did not experience that, you know, growing up or in my family growing up, nor in our kids. Um, and, and so it's interesting to hear other families' experiences with that. Uh, and, and that really, you know, energetic child that is disruptive in the classroom and all that kind of thing. And the one thing that I remember hearing from those families, and this uh, was, was good for some of the families out there, was that they had their child run around their house, and it was a common thing I heard. Before they, you know, took their, you know, their child uh, with that hyper uh, activity aspects about them uh, to the school, whether it was putting them on a bus or going in the car, they made them run around the house a bunch of times. And I remember, you know, not that we were trying to dissipate the energy or anything. I did that with my own kids. Um, they love. I don't know what it is running around the house. But we would play games as we're doing it, whether it was hide and seek and then running and all that kind of stuff, or I, I acted like a velaraptor, and that was our own thing. And my daughter even refers back to it, and she goes, I actually was scared when you would do that, but I loved it. And so um, running around the house dissipated a lot of that energy in those children so that when they went to school, they didn't have to deal with all that energy you know, stored up in them, and then it would come out in, in maybe negative ways in the classroom. You can do exactly the same thing with your dogs. So running around the house, I play this whole uh, game with my dogs in the yard where they uh, kind of have like this, I, I visualize a line um, going out from either side of me and they're not allowed to pass it kind of thing. That's the game. They win every single time. There's no way that I can keep up with those dogs the way, you know, how fast they are. And I got little dogs. And so I'm just, my goal is just to try to tag them as they pass that boundary. Uh, and it's fun. They love it. And they do it a bunch of times. And then all of a sudden they're done. And when they're done, they go run to the door. And so it's, it's getting that energy out of the dog, the dog. So it would be maybe uh, throwing the ball around, chasing like what I do or whatever it is that you and your dog really love to do and play around with. Do that. 
And you get that energy a lot lower as a result when they come in. Oftentimes, my dogs then go lay down immediately and take a nap. And so doing something, that play game, uh, would be great for you. So now when would you use it? Well, if you have guests coming over, I have a friend that actually does this with her couple of Goldens. Uh, she runs them outside before her guests come over because she gets she gets frustrated when the dogs are just too engaged with the, the guests that are coming over. Whether, you know, they're jumping up on them or they're barking or they're just all in their business kind of a thing. And so she runs her Goldens outside before they come in. Another time to do this is when you're doing training. Do you have that dog? You're like, oh, I don't know how to train these dogs. My dog is going spastic right now. You know, it's just jumping up and I'm trying to get him to sit. And the last thing this dog wants to do is sit right now. So get them outside, run them, get, get that energy out, and then uh, come back in and try it again. Are you still seeing that energy? Try it again. Go run back outside. Your dog, you know, whether it's a puppy, it's going to have more energy. You're going to need to bring it out and, and do it that way. Um, these are great ways of getting your dog to calm down so you can do whatever it is you're doing. Whether it might even be going to bed at night. Go outside, get them running around. You know, here you're, you're going to wear yourself out, so you're going to have a good night's sleep as well. So that's your first step in getting dogs to quiet down. Um, and calm down. Same thing with, I. we do it a little bit with our cat if he's a little uh, anxious uh, sometimes around uh, uh, the thunderstorms. It's a good thing to do is get him running out around before the storm occurs. With all the technology we have today, gosh, we know half an hour before it even hits us when it's still calm outside and everything, can't hear any booming going on, get those dogs outside, run them around, run your cat around a little bit, get interactive with them. Get them to get that energy, that pent up energy out so it doesn't come out in negative ways when the storm is coming. So then the second thing that I wanted to talk about is, is well, okay, I did that run. Uh, life is a little better. I appreciate that advice. But do you got a little bit more for me because my dog just, or cat just does get uh, rambunctious when it comes to, you know, the, the storms or my you know, guests and all that kind of a thing. Um, one thing that I have used and I've talked with a ton of customers about because we sell a lot of it is nature vets quiet moments. Uh, one of the here, one of the best stories is we had it on the air here. Um, if you can remember, uh, we, we, we were live, we had call-ins and all this. We had a gentleman from going from Chicago on his way to Texas, his dog in the background, you could hear, um, creating a ruckus loud and all that kind of stuff in the car while he was live on the air here. He goes, can you help me out? I got a long ways to go. We actually then opened the store for him because it was earlier in the morning. Uh, we got him in there. He bought a bag of quiet moments, nature mm -hmm. vets quiet moments. And, uh, and, and that was as far as we got on the air that day. The rest of the story, he called back 10 hours later. He goes, guys, I just want to tell you, it was unbelievable. Quiet moments actually did work and all that. He goes, I just got a little cautionary story for you though on it. He goes, I know you said give them, you know, a couple of them, wait, you know, all this kind of stuff. And you did say that, you know, hey, you can give a little bit more if need be and all that. Well, I went kind of overboard on it. Yeah. He fed the whole bag. Oh, and he goes, and the consequence is, well, he goes, the benefit was is my dog was sacked out. Just totally relaxed in the back seat. Wow. That stuff really worked. What I didn't realize is when you give them the whole thing, they really, really, really relax. Well, there's some muscles that we have in our bodies and our dogs and cats have that you don't want them to relax uh -huh. too much because though, while they're laying there, they'll poop too relaxed. And he goes, I just want to let you know <laughs> you can do that. And I've had not quite that extreme of stories, but I've had other stories of, uh, customers coming in and saying, holy cow, I did feed a little too many and you know, my dog was out for a while, uh, and, but everything you know, wore off and all that kind of stuff. This is a non-medicinal, you know, uh, medicinal, you know, as far as prescribed products. This is all natural stuff. And so it, you know, you're going to be safe when you do it and all that. And all of these dogs and cats uh, did come through it really well. You know, it wasn't uh, any long-term uh, issues and all that. But what that told me was, holy cow, this stuff works. And just yesterday I had a customer tell me exactly that again. 
we were, they were bringing a puppy home from Petland and we were going through the training and, you know, this is how you potty train and all this kind of stuff. And um, one of the things that goes home with our uh, puppies is quiet moments so that it helps the customer in those trying times. Okay. Feed them a couple of quiet moments. And I said, Hey, Oh, by the way, this customer already had purchased uh, two puppies from us. And so knew a lot of what I was talking about. I said, Oh, I just would love to get your feedback on all this stuff too. And they, when we got to quiet moments, they said, that stuff really works. Holy cow. We were using it to help our dog go to sleep at night. So instead of hearing the whining and, and all that kind of stuff, maybe, you know, Oh, where am I? You know, and it's dark and you know, what am I supposed to do? And they might, maybe the anxiety went up a little bit. They fed them a couple of quiet moments. Dog. <laughs> fell asleep really mm -hmm. nicely and it was so they told me of all these different ways they were using it when they went for car rides they had a couple of quiet moments to relax the dog that kind of thing and this works with cats as well there's a cat version um, a couple of uh, testimonials that I came across on quiet moments a, uh, a customer said that this product works wonders for our 10 year old Great Dane she gets very nervous at night or if we're not at home and so this customer uh, feeds that that product then to their Great Dane to, to handle those at nights and when they're not at home. Uh, another one, my Golden Retriever gets extremely nervous, anxious, and jittery when there are loud noises. The 4th of July made her a trembling basket case for the first two years. Then I found this product, uh, Quiet Moments by Nature Vet. She is calm and quiet. She sleeps through the event. So this is, these, in, these are all this year, so real current uh, testimonials. And then uh, a third one that I came across, uh, as our dog is getting older, it seems to be scared of so many things. Uh, we tried quiet moments at the suggestion of our veterinarian. It helps our puppy uh, so much. Oh, it's interesting. They called it a puppy, but it's an older dog. They referred to it as a pup, so that's mm -hmm. a sentimental name. Uh, he's back to his quiet, mellow, old self. Aww. So that's a, a really neat thing. Another one here uh, on Facebook. Over the past week, my Beagle Riley has been acting very anxious at night. So I gave him <laughs> your quiet moments calming aid with melatonin. And it worked. Just wanted to thank you and give you your product a thumbs up. So again, this is Nature Vet uh, is the manufacturer. Quiet Moments is the uh, actual product itself. Um, it works in here, but I can get to it real quick. There are some natural ingredients that help reduce the stress and tension. You know, melatonin, things like that are in here that help your dog get through or your cat. They have a cat version as well. They also have it in different forms. They have a tablet, they have a chew, they have powders. So what is your dog, you know, or cat? How, how can you get these things into it? Well, they have different ways of getting it into it. So Quiet Moments is a really good product uh, for this. Uh, then the final one is, is the, uh, uh, oh, I can't come out with it right now. I don't have it in front of me. It's the, um, it's the vest that you put on your dog. Jay, help me out here. What's that called? The yes. calming vest. Wow. Thunder. No, thunder. Wait. Um, something about thunder, right? Here, let's just yeah. do is it the Thunder Vest? There it is. All right, I'm going to do your countdown. Mm -hmm. And three, two, one. All right. So the third thing I wanted to talk about was the thunder shirt. Thunder shirt. Do you, oh, do you use this one? No, we talked about that. <laughs> I, I, I know it can calm you down. It's Jay, Jay, you Jay likes to put his thunder shirt That's on right. at nights to calm him down. <laughs> uh, this one is a, an interesting one. I think we all can like get into it and understand it that. We like to be coddled. We like to be hugged, you know, kind of a thing. When we were infants, we let my doctor, I remember when Emily was that, you know, newborn, she, he said, when you wrap Emily up, wrap it tight. She will feel more secure. Uh, you will get better results, you know, kind of a thing when they're going to sleep and stuff. And so we wrapped it 
you know, fairly firm uh, around Emily. The Thunder shirt is meant to be used in the same way for your dog. It's meant to bring some calmness through that firm hug around the body uh, to the dog. And so my thing was when I heard about it, I go, really? You know, you know is this really going to work? Well, there's statistics out there that say, yeah, it does. Whether this is anecdotal or not, really, I guess, you know, kind of goes to the way if, if your dog uh, experiences that calmness because of that firmness around the body, then it works. Go with it. Uh, they have a guaranteed, you know, money back kind of a thing on that product. So you can use it uh, with that confidence. Well, if it doesn't work, I'm just going to bring it back. So right before 4th of July or if you got a big event coming up and you want your dog to calm down, just put it on there. If it doesn't work, bring it back kind of a thing. Cool. So Thundershirt is another way. And I've had a lot of customers. I have had a couple customers say, eh, it didn't work. Uh, returns, we have sold thousands of them and we've had probably less than 10 ever come back. So that's a pretty good testimonial in itself. Uh, no, we don't see it coming back. So the Thundershirt is another way to get your dog to calm down. So just in summary with this whole, how do I get my pets to calm down a little bit? Um, one is, is run them out, have fun with them, play with them in the yard, get that energy out just like you would a child uh, right before the event or the storm or fireworks or whatever it is that your dog gets anxious about or just going to bed at night, you know, get into a routine. Be good for you. Exercise as well. A little exercise before you go to bed will be a good thing and you will calm down as well. I like that more and more that I uh, say that and hear that. Then the second thing is, is nature best calming products so that it gets them to calm down through the melatonin in natural ways. That one really works. There are so many testimonials on quiet moments out there that say that this works. And then that thunder shirt is the final one uh, that can just instantly calm your dog down just by putting it on right before or right when things are happening to get your dog to just slow down and, and let it all come uh, naturally to them. Use a combination of all three of these and you will have one sleepy dog or cat when the function is occurring. So that's calming your pet calming down. Your pet down. Probably needed that after the Cubs game. Huh? Yeah, I think everyone needs to calm down. Oh, I was trying to go to bed after that one and <laughs> I needed to get some energy out. And luckily I just laid there and it finally happened, but I probably should have gotten up and run around a little bit. <laughs> Where'd you go, Ron? <laughs> so. Uh, finally, we want to talk about American Natural Premium Dog Food, mm -hmm. uh, so a new product that we just brought into our store. It is made by a couple up in Wisconsin that they have their own kennel. And so they're raising dogs and having fun with it and all that kind of stuff. And I think I was saying back in the 1980s, they just didn't feel there was a really good dog food out there that one, met the premium nature that they wanted to in a dog food and two, uh, meet the price point that they felt is reasonable for dog food. And I think we all feel that sometimes, you know, there are some dog foods, man, they are, when you read the label, you go, holy cow, that is really good stuff. But then you go, oh, I'm not sure if, uh, if uh, I'm going to spend that kind of money for it. Well, American natural premium answers both of those, a really good premium, uh, uh, ingredients that they put into it at really good protein levels, fat levels, and all that kind of a thing at a great price. Uh, so that's the where they're coming from. And then they see really good uh, results of it on dogs that they're raising and everything. Uh, uh, and, and over the years have become bigger and bigger. So we brought it into our store just to see, you know, is this, dog, is this right for your dog? And uh, we have a stack out in front of the, the, the uh, store right now. So you can check it out and all that. So a little bit more about it. There are high, uh, you know, highlights of it, of the original recipe, which we have in the store. It says carefully chosen ingredients deliver exceptional nutrients and digestibility for all life stages. What they're saying on the digestibility is they're getting a, away from the grains and more into the rice uh, type things. And I know some of their products have potatoes in it. Those are more digestible by not only us, but by our dog as well. Highly digestible proteins, so from chicken meal, pork meal, fish meal, and whole eggs provides muscle building amino acids. So uh, you heard meal quite a bit, and we've talked about that a lot on the show. That's a good thing. So that's cooked weight. If it just said chicken, pork, and fish, that would be fine as well. 
But when they say chicken meal, and that's the that's at the high end of the ingredients list, the first one, realize chicken meal is 300% more concentrated than if you just read it as chicken. Uh, chicken meal is the cooked weight. And, and if you just see chicken, that is before cooked. And I always equate it to the, the uh, quarter pounder. It is a quarter pound prior to them cooking. After they cook it, it is no longer, it's far less than a quarter pound. So chicken meal, pork meal, fish meal are all really good things. Uh, a blend of complex carbohydrates. This is where I was saying more digestible carbohydrates like in uh, rice and stuff. Brown rice, barley, oat flour. Uh, yields steady, slow release of energy throughout the day. So those are good, very digestible carbohydrates. And then probiotics are put in to support a healthy digestive tract and immune system, which improves stool texture, reduce foul stool odor, which is, I have not read that in a, uh, in a description yet. So to reduce, <laughs> are you having problems with that foul odor? Uh, they've got probiotics in there that will help with that and make less mess to clean up. So it's nice. feed less and uh, pick up less as a result. And then the uh, dog food advisor rating, uh, they gave premium natural, uh, American natural premium dry food on a whole of all the brands of uh, four out of five, which is pretty dang big. And you can go into if you, uh, even more, they rate each one a little differently based on uh, the ingredients. And so they range from three stars all the way up to five stars across all the different products that they have in there. And to get a five star rating from Dog Food Advisor is pretty dang difficult. So these guys know what they're doing and do, do a nice job of it. So right. Dog Food Advisor gave them a good yeah, thumbs yeah. up on uh, doing the right thing. All right. Well, that's all the time we have, if you can believe it. It flew right by. And oh, come on. Come on. As we wrap up, tell us about your store. What is this? Tell us about your store. Oh, we're <laughs> having too much fun over here. All right, we are Pet Land of Iowa City. We're located across from the uh, Lucky's Market. And uh, if you haven't heard about avocados, that's the new restaurant just a few doors down from us. Hey, that's a really nice place to check out. If you haven't done it, go there and eat some food and then come over and play with some pets while you're uh, having that night out with the family. Uh, so we do $5 nail trims, no appointments necessary. And then we also do our buy 10, get one free on all of our dog food and cat food. All right. That's Petland of Iowa City. Paul's Daily Petland Show Sunday mornings at 9 on oh, KXIC. Oh, oh. Bye. All right. Sorry. I was a bit distracted during that show. I know you could tell. Um, it's got stuff coming into work and I'm distracted. So I apologize. You are good.